Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be doing a reverse sear on a whole New York strip loin, and I'm going to do it on my brand new SNS Grills kettle. Let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sort of a, like a slather for this big old piece of meat. We're going to kick it off with some not just for beef rub. The thing I like about this is it has no salt. It has some fantastic flavor, but zero salt. And that allows the, the cook, whoever's using this, to add the amount of salt that they want or need. And I think that is brilliant. Some dried rosemary some dried thyme. I just want to add some kind of, because of the type of cook we're doing, some kind of more herbal components to this, to the rub. Some dehydrated onion flakes, some dehydrated minced garlic. I always love using the dehydrated garlic or onion rather than the powders. Then I have here some smoked paprika and some cayenne pepper, some ground cayenne. So let me get this mixed up. Right now we're going to add some extra virgin olive oil and I'm just going to add enough. So basically until it looks how I want it to look. And I'm looking for, I guess a good description would be kind of a thin paste. Like see here, this is kind of chunky. I want a little bit more liquid in here. And this is what I'm looking for right here. Let's get out that big old piece of meat. So when I purchased this, this was just under 12 and a half pounds of USDA Choice New York strip loin. So if I made, you know, slices, basically I have a bunch of New York strip steaks. Um, what I did was a dry brine on this. So the first thing I did was I removed all the exterior fat that I could simply because we're going to be doing a very hot reverse sear on this. And if I left all the fat on there, it, we, it would turn into a giant grease fire. Fat does not sear. Once all the fat was removed, I hit it with kosher salt, put it on like a cooling rack on a cookie sheet, put it in my refrigerator and I left it in there uncovered, let the salt do its magic. And it was in my fridge a little over one whole day. So we're going to go ahead and cover it with this Paste now the slather. By doing that dry brine, the salt has penetrated the meat now. It brought moisture out and then took moisture back in. So it's going to be very moist, very juicy, and very flavorful. There we go. That is gorgeous. What I'm going to do now is just pop this back in the fridge. In the meantime, we're going to get the grill ready. So as I mentioned at the beginning of my video, I'm going to be using the SNS Grills kettle, 22 inch kettle, extremely well thought out. If you've ever used or if you're an owner of one of the other brands of kettles, they're all great. I, mean, so I, I love my kettles, but there are some deficiencies, some workarounds you have to do with those kettles. And I'll kind of point out some of the solutions that SNS came out with, with when they designed this particular kettle. But there are some fantastic reviews uh, that go over all the features in detail. Uh, a few of them are on Justin over at Baby Back Maniac's channel, so check him out. And also Tom Horseman uh, has some, some great videos as well on this kettle. And a little game, anybody that watches Tom Horseman or maybe you go check him out now. Let's name his channel. It's Tom Horseman, and, and he's like a Rube Goldberg of barbecue. And that's actually my pick is Rube Goldberg barbecue because the guy, <laughs> he modifies everything. And uh, some of his mods are brilliant. It's fun to watch. Anyway, so we're using the Slow and Sear Deluxe insert here. I have a little bit of uh, some charcoal briquettes in the corner. Put in a charcoal lighter. See if I can get the lighter to light. It did, yay. 
for now I have the damper open fully and it's, it's nice it's marked here so you can see it's fully opened. But one of the cool ingenious mods on this kettle is this little damper right here, this flap that covers a one inch hole. Now you can use one of those fire control devices, you know, the fan devices in this hole, or you can actually use it as a damper, which is what I'm going to do to control this cook. So once those briquettes are good and going and I add the unlit briquettes to the slow and sear, I'll be closing this fully and using this to control uh, the temperature as far as the lower damper. I'm not really sure what this is called. I probably should have looked. But Justin calls it the smoke hole. And I don't know if that's a sanctioned name. Anyway, let's let this get going here. So the briquettes are nice and lit. Let's go ahead and fill up the slow and sear with some unlit. Toss in two hunks of hickory. Get that grate on. Want to make sure that it's the end that can open over the charcoal bed. One of the great features of this grill is right here. It's a uh, thermometer, a temperature probe port. Let's go ahead and get the lid on and we want to make sure that the, the lid damper is over where the meat's going to be. So opposite of the charcoal, get this fully open. So here's where we're going to mix things up a little bit. Normally I'd leave this fully open if we didn't have this, but we're going to open up this bottom. Again, the baby back maniac <laughs> smoke hole. I don't know what else to call it. We're going to fully close this because I want to utilize this to control the internal temperature of this cooker once we're actually cooking. We're going to leave it fully open for now. So now we're just going to leave both dampers fully open. We're going to allow this kettle to come up to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll start dialing in our cooking temperature. One thing I wanted to point out, another cool feature of this cooker. They've actually put the temperature gauge on the same side as the lid damper. And for this type of cook, that's huge. If you're going to you know, rely on the lid thermometer, you don't want to have it right over the bed of hot coals. It'll throw everything off as far as trying to get an accurate temperature reading. Okay, we're at 175 now. It didn't take very long at all. So I have here about four cups of hot water that I'm going to put in the water reservoir on the slow and sear. This is going to boil and create a nice even heat on the cook side. Now we're just going to work on dialing in the heat. So I'm going to go ahead and close the lid damper a bit. Close this a bit. So now I'm just going to monitor this adjustment and see where it lands. If I need a little bit more heat, I'll open it a little bit more. Less, I'll close it down a little bit more. So we'll see where we get. I'm looking for 225 degrees Fahrenheit for this cook. So stand by. All right, we settled in at two and a quarter and took about 15 minutes, uh, just some minor damper control. It was actually pretty easy to lock it in. So let's go ahead and start cooking here. So now it's simply about monitoring the temperatures of the meat. Once it hits 75 degrees, I'll flip it so we can get a nice even cook. Once it hits 125 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll pull it, kind of set it off the side, let it rest while we get this cooker heated up for the sear. So we're about 40 minutes into this cook. That meat just hit 75 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to flip it. So again, we're just going to continue monitoring this cook. Uh, so far, so good. The cooker's been rolling really stable. I'm happy with that. So I'll see you guys in a bit. We are at an hour, 45 minutes, and we just hit that 125.
just look at that. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. So I'm going to pull that off. So what I'm going to do now is take the meat inside, tint it with foil, let it rest. I'm going to remove the grate here. And it's still a ton of charcoal here. I mean, I hardly used any charcoal at all in this cook. So what I'm going to do next is remove this grate, let it cool down. I'm going to open up all the bottom dampers, let this just supercharge to full power. And then we're going to do that sear using the cold grate technique. See you guys in a bit. Okay, as you can see, we have a roaring bit of coals now in the slow and sear. I want to point out something because I'm sure you'll notice it, but honestly, the idea came to me kind of like, hey, I'll do this. I pulled out that water reservoir. I, I used a pair of, of good barbecue tongs and a, a pair of welding gloves and pulled it out. Um, there wasn't, there was like half full of water, I guess, so it wasn't that difficult. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I had, you know, a nice, surface area of charcoal and I added a few more briquettes. Okay, so the grate is now nice and cool. And we're gonna be using that spin grate, that uh, cold grate technique. About a minute on each side, four times. There you go, looking good. Wow, that is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to allow this to rest a little bit, set up everything I need to set up to show you guys what this looks like and describe what it tastes like. See you in a bit. And here we go. Look at that, all rested up. It, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It smells so good. And that kind of, you know, that, that beefy, big old plane flying over, beefy, herby smell. S smell of smoke is still in the air. So I'm going to go for that money shot right off the bat here. Let's slice this. Oh. Tender as I'll get out. We have that gorgeous medium rare wall to wall, just wall to wall, medium rare pink. The nice thing about the, this is a nice way to kind of mix it up if you know, especially holidays, if you know, you want to do something different other than the, the usual prime rib, this is a nice way to go. And it's a little bit less expensive than prime rib. It's delicious. I mean, it has a, just that really rich flavor. Uh, first time I ever had it done this way was actually attending. This was years ago, like probably nine or 10 years ago, uh, Johnny Triggs uh, master class. It was a two day class and they fed us dinner uh, the very first night, this. Oh. And again, I mean, if you wanted, you know, sandwiches, you could just shave it. It's just, just a really nice, nice, cut. Nice way to go. Really juicy. Cheers. So this crust that we have here is beautiful. I mean, um, it's nice because you're getting all the, you know, the herbs, the spices, and then you're getting that little kick that cayenne will give you, but it, it's not uncomfortable. It's just perfect. So my final assessments of this cook, it tastes wonderful. As far as the cooker, it, it was a pleasure cooking on that SNS kettle, ran itself. Uh, the slow and sear did the job. It made it very easy for me. Once I got it dialed in at that 225, it, it just sort of ran itself. Um, baby back maniacs, <laughs> baby back maniac smoke hole down there. That was, I really appreciated the location of that because again, you're, um, you, there's no guesswork. 
it, it was very familiar to me from other cookers I have, you know, just moving that little dial over, so to speak, the little damper, circular damper over. You, you kind of see exactly what you're getting. And, uh, you know, the, I, had the, I was running the Thermopro, the smoke, and instantly I could see it reacting to my little adjustments I made. Once I got it dialed in, again, it just ran itself. Uh, I hardly had to do any adjustments after that. I just sort of monitored the cook the whole time. The, the sear itself, I mean, I, I am a fan of the cold grate technique. I like it. Uh, do what technique works for you, but I think it is a good technique. And one of the reasons I like it is because you get that nice Maillard reaction across the whole surface of the meat you're cooking. So I think it's a great technique. Everyone, I think, owes it to at least try it once before they really make a decision. But um, yeah. I'm happy, very happy. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Again, keep those suggestions coming. Sub if you haven't. Um, ring the bell if you have. Thumb it up if you like it. And what beer am I drinking here? Because I'm supposed to tell. This is uh, another local brewery called Belching Beaver. I love the name. And this is Miso Honey Blonde. It's a nice blonde ale with a little bit of sweetness to it. It's good stuff. Great with beef. See you on the next video. Cheers.